Hi, so this is Charlie. Why don't we um, <clears throat> talk about installing the Android um, x86 project into VirtualBox so that we will have a virtual version of Android x86 for us to use um, in the classroom or elsewhere. Um, first, we want to go to androidx86.org. <clears throat> And then they've got a link here to the most recent release, but perhaps this video will last a while. So we ought to go to the downloads page and then you can scroll down and you can see they've got the old versions of Android going way back to Lollipop or whatever these old versions were called. And we're going to right now, we're going to get um, a KitKat version, Android x86 4.4. These were the released candidates. These are the released versions. We want the ISOs. We don't want the image. And this is release two. So this is the one we want. And you would choose view and then it would begin the download for you. Now, <clears throat> as fate would have it, um, I've already downloaded it here. So we don't need to wait for that. When it comes down, it looks like this, right? Android x86 4.4 r2.iso. Then you come over here to VirtualBox <clears throat> and you choose new and you type in Android 4.4 KitKat or whatever feels right to you. Then of course that's a Linux based system. And so we set it and it's 32 bit. So we set it to Linux 2.6 slash 3.x 32 bit. And then we choose next here. And now we need to have a little memory and um, 1024 is plenty in most cases. And you could get by with less. Um, 512 would work also. And then we could go to next and we're gonna create a virtual hard drive and it'll be a VDI and we choose next and we'll have it dynamically allocated. And now this is kind of a tricky one to decide depending on your disk space available. I'll go with four, which I believe is more than we need. I think you could probably get by with two, but, um, or perhaps even one, but we'll see. And we'll go ahead and we'll create that. So now we've created our little virtual machine. We come up to settings here and now we pick that IDO, that ISO that we did. So we come over here to the storage page in the settings. Remember, how did we get here now? We went, we selected our virtual machine. We went to settings. We went to storage. We click on the little empty controller here and we come out here. And if we could read it, it would tell us to choose our now you can see I'd already got a practice run on here, but we just go out here and grab that I ISO. That's the one x86 4.4 R2. We open it. Now it's in place there. And now we're kind of in a position at least to try to get started. So we'll go ahead and we'll launch VirtualBox here and it will load in this. Now we don't want to run, we could run Android without installation, but we want to do the install. So we go ahead and click through here. It says create modify partitions. We'll go ahead and we'll do that. Then down here at the bottom, you use your arrow keys to move around. Do you see how that works with your arrow keys? And you choose new, you choose primary, you take the default size, you choose bootable, and then you kind of run out of things to do. So you use the arrow key, the right arrow key to come all the way over here to write. And they want you to type in the word yes, and you press enter. And now it's writing the partition table to disk. And that takes a couple seconds. But you can see up at the top, you want to see that boot primary Linux um, there across the top. Now it looks like it's done. So we write key over to right arrow key over to quit. Now we come back here and there's our hard drive that we just formatted, that we just partitioned, formatted is the wrong word, partitioned. And <clears throat> now we're going to go ahead and select that partition. And then we want to format it using ext3. So we'll go ahead and we'll do that. And then all data will be lost. Are you sure you know what you're doing? Yes, we do. 
And then do you want to install the bootloader for Grub? And yes, we do. And do you want to install, just keep saying yes to everything. And then it'll go through this process. And this takes a moment, but not fatefully long. Oh boy, did it used to take forever back on slower systems. But this goes a lot faster these days. And, <coughs> excuse me, we're done fairly quickly here. So what it's doing really is formatting your hard drive right then and maybe writing a, a little bit of the install. And now it says, do you just want to run your Android x86? We could, but I'm overly fussy and compulsive. So I always choose reboot at this stage. It reboots and then I just let it reboot. And then it, totally nonsensically, I then say, let's go ahead and just power off the machine. So, and then the reason we want to do that is we want to come back here to the settings, same place we started over here, select your virtual machine, go to the settings, go to storage and undo what we did before. Just remove that CD. We don't need it anymore and we don't want it anymore. In fact, and now we should be able to start and this time it should boot up into this. So our install's done. We've done it, but it's, it turns out then you just press enter here. You could wait five seconds or so. You pick the first option on the menu and it comes up here and we go ahead and we, we uh, let the system boot the first time and it'll take longer to boot the first time than any other time. I think it's sort of preparing that virtual hard drive or the dynamic hard drive. So it does take a minute here to load. Now, this stage on a slow machine can go on for even a half an hour and yet still work. But if your machine's that slow, gosh, gosh, I mean, it's just so painful. Um, the whole world of virtual machines is at least in part about having enough memory, having a, hard, a, a large enough hard drive, having a fast drive, having um, support for the virtual extensions, um, virtualization, having a, a support for virtualization in there. So then they finally get you to this screen. <clears throat> now, this is the first place where things get complicated. You drag your mouse over the screen and it disappears and you can press, hold down the right control key and press I and then click in there and you'll get the mouse working inside there. The other key that's very helpful here sometimes can be the, um, now this, this will go on for, this is the one that at least typically takes an extremely long time to happen. But as you can see the the whole operating system was installed. We've got a copy of Android running virtually. Now for select Wi-Fi, we don't really have Wi-Fi here. We're just sitting on our PC. So you want to skip that option. Okay, and um, skip it anyway, and then got a Google account. And for now, we're just going to say no, and we're just going to say not now. And then we'll go ahead and take those defaults there. And we'll say Pacific time. It looks like it's got the time more or less right. And um, this can get filled in later, but I can type in some stuff just to kind of keep the PC God's happy there. So it takes you here. This is really the first time you had to use the mouse. What I was going to say before is over to the right of your space bar, there's usually a key that's the context menu key that would be the same key that would pop up your right menu click. And that one can help you when you're in this world, except on this screen. I think if you just press enter, perhaps you can get yourself through this screen. Now, finally, we're through with that. We're totally installed. It really didn't take all that long. We've done it in about 10 minutes from, from ground zero to here. Um, I'm going to make one change, though, that I perhaps should have made earlier. Um, I'm going to come back over here. Now, see, my mouse is trapped inside of this box. This is a crucial thing. So in order to get it back out of there, press right control I and then you can get out. And we're gonna come over here. We're gonna to go to select Android. We're gonna select settings. We're gonna to go to network and we're gonna change it from NAT to bridged adapter. We want this thing to really be on the network, okay? So now it's going to get a real IP address. 
Now again, I'm going to press Control I to get my mouse back. I'm going to click down here to come up to the main menu and that little round circle. And again, they want me to click through some things just that first time. And now over here, you can see a terminal emulator. And let's go ahead and we'll open that up. And then the font is ludicrously small. And so we will choose preferences over here. And we'll go ahead and we'll set the font size to 16. And then we're done with that. And now we can almost see what we're doing. And we can type net CFG. And now we can see what our IP address is. As you can see, it's 168.156.41.70. Okay, the slash 21 part, we don't care about. It's the 168.156.41.70. That's the part that we care about right now. <clears throat> and now we're going to go, we're going to press Control I again. And we're going to go back over here and we're going to launch um, a copy of Ubuntu, which will probably come up way too big to fit inside this window. And I'm not going to go through the process in this video of how you actually build an APK file, build a, an Android application using PhoneGap slash Cordova. Instead, I've already got one built in here. And what we're going to do is we're going to just install it onto that virtual machine that we just created. And now I'll go ahead and open up the terminal. We're going to type ADB slash devices. And you'll see that right now we're not connected to any device. Now we're going to come back over here to our Android box and we're going to say, well, what is that IP address anyhow? And it's something like ADB connect 168.156.41.70. <clears throat> and now you can see it says we're connected. So now if we type ADB devices, it says that we're connected to that device. So our Ubuntu VirtualBox machine is now connected to our Android VirtualBox. It's running there. You could also connect to a phone you plugged into the system, but that's going to be hard for us to do at school. Here we're virtualizing everything. We're virtualizing Android. We're virtualizing um, Ubuntu inside a VirtualBox running on top of Windows. Okay, so now I'm going to switch into the source directory and I'm going to switch into a pre-made um, copy of a Cordova, a very simple Cordova app. And I'm going to type ADB install. And now I'm going to come out here to my source directory, to my Cordova 2 directory, to my platforms directory, to my Android directory, to my ant build directory and here I'm going to find Cordova app dash debug dot APK which is the thing I want to install and I'm going to press ADB install there and then you saw a little action when I did that it took place over here on the Android box and it says do you accept control I do you accept this and I go yes I do. I go, yes, I do. And now if we, there you could see that it finished over here. So I'll come back to my home page on this machine and I'll go up to the menu. And there's my Hello Cordova app. It's been installed. You can see it right here. And there it is. You can see it's running just fine for us there. So that gets you kind of from the beginning to the end fairly quickly there. All right. Well, that's all I wanted to show you. Well, maybe we could make one other change here. 
um, control I get my mouse out of there I'll come back over here and then I'll come into the editor to Genie we'll go to the WW directory we'll go to index.html we'll come down here and we'll change it from the uh, Apache Cordoba to the Prague 272 Cordoba and we'll go ahead and we'll save that and then we'll come back down here Cordoba build Android to rebuild our project We'll have to uninstall it first. So we'll uninstall it and then we'll reinstall it. And then we'll come back over here and we'll look at the updated version. You can just use your mouse to navigate around on it sometimes. And there you can see it's now the Prog 272 Cordova, so it's easy to change our code. All right, it's Charlie. That's all I wanted to show you. Thank you now. Bye.